Well, hello there. It's Retro PC Durham with another another machine here. We are uh, taking a look at an aged machine that we've uh, tried to repurpose here once again for for uh, future use. Uh, this is a Dell Dimension 3100. We'll just do the old. Uh, I do the tip here. It's kind of hard to see here. This here we'll twist up here. Dell Dimension 3100 uh, is the uh, is the model. This uh, Windows XP Pentium 4 originally based machine that we have uh, brought essentially back to life so again a donation from uh, someone who you know didn't need an old pc anymore and this uh, this heavy guy came my way um was quite uh dirty and dusty um i think had been probably sitting in a, a garage or attic or something for quite some time but um was you know repurposable we'll spin around to the back here take a look uh, what we've got it's pretty bare bones um you know so basic power supply uh usb ports and uh, ethernet port audio ports and uh, integrated video and that's it on this system board um and we'll get to that again uh, a little bit further when we uh, when we open this box up and just take a look inside and see what else we have to work with. So um, another thing that's cool about these Dell Dimension cases, one uh, you know I like I like some of the design elements. The little clip on the top here that pops the side panel off is pretty cool from a from a use perspective. Um, this zone in the front here, right, that allows air to come in and has a main system fan that cools everything down. Pretty cool design, um, all in all. Um, but unfortunately, the guts in this thing leave uh, quite a bit to be desired. So taking a look inside here, uh, basic power supply, it's 230 watts. But again, that's more than enough for a system, you know, that you don't need a lot of power for. Uh, CD-ROM drive and floppy drive. And then we'll take a look down here at the, uh, at the components. So again, some of the stuff that I think is cool is the fact that you get this air intake with this big fan cools over top of the power supply which has got some fins in here as well uh, and then that blows through into the back of the system um, the design to have you know uh, hard drive slots that are you know in these clips that make it e easy to install and manage the system um, unfortunately with this with this system it is not very impressive in terms of the um, expandability of this unit so number one from a memory perspective it only has two uh, memory dim slots uh, so we were able to get some uh, very basic memory installed in here. It's got uh, only two gig of memory. Um, now the problem with that is I did have more powerful memory, but um, not only does this system only have two memory DIMM slots, it only accepts a maximum of two gig worth of memory, period. So we couldn't even install four gig of memory and get you know a, a more appropriate amount of memory for a 32-bit install, install of Windows. The other problem with this system is from I.O. expansion capability. So you'll notice here from I.O. expansion, we only have a PCIe by one slot and then PCIe and then PCI gen slots. Um, that means for upgrading something like the video, onboard video on the system, which is garbage. It's a very bare bones, like 8 meg onboard video card, which is barely capable of doing anything. Um, the only way I'd be able to improve video is if I had a, a buy one uh, video card, um, which, you know, that's not too easy to come by. So, um, actually, I do have something that might work for this. I wonder if we could give that a try. Um, I've got a couple um, expansion things that some dude gave me a while, while, while ago. Um, let me see if I have them in one of my bins here that were like, you took a PCI by one slot and you turned it into a by 16 slot and I wonder if I had a low powered card um, in PCI that would work for this see it's it's like this you plug this into the slot right sorry like that into the slot and then it's got this you know USB cable that I think is just used because it gives transfer, uh, and then it plugs into here and gives you this by 16 slot. Now I think this was like for people who want to do like coin mining. Um, I wonder if we could make something like that work. Now 
where we would install the card afterwards so we can actually get it out the get it out to the back of the system might be a bit of a challenge um, but that's something that maybe we could look at doing um, all right let's take a let's take a minute here and let's see if we can rig something up here that that might be able to work all right so I haven't uh, figured out how to make it fit but I, I took one of these you know these guys here and we've installed a um, a PCIe video card. I'm not, I think it's a, actually, I think it's one that came out of another Dell machine in the past. Um, I don't think it's a very powerful card, but actually that's what I kind of wanted to do was make sure I was plugging something in that was pretty low power. Um, just to, you know, see how this whole thing works. And if it actually does work, then what I'm going to do is try to figure out how I can maybe cut to fit um, the case here to be able to install the card, you know, kind of semi permanently um, in this uh, in this system. And uh, that way we don't have to worry about only having an eight meg video card installed. Uh, so I'm just right now waiting to see if we can get uh, windows to finish booting. Um, as you can see on the screen, the windows symbol is showing up there. Um, that is routed through this video card. That's, you know, this guy here is plugged in. So it's just a matter of now figuring out one, if it's actually going to work and then two, where, where I can install this card inside. Um, where the system board is and the amount of room it can't install down at the bottom here this pci slot here impedes and even if even if i remove this i'm not sure that there'd still be enough room to have this kind of pressing against the system board um and there aren't any like in place already vertical slots so um yeah what we'll probably have to do is take on the back here there's this you know kind of grill maybe clip out a couple a couple parts of that um, to be able to fit um, all of these. And what maybe might work is, you know, on a card, I got another one out here that I tested, you know, your card, you've got the, you know, these these pieces here, these little screws here that you connect your, your, your um, monitor cable up to. Um, if I can uh, maybe like screw those, like clip enough to get the graphics ports through, and then these can screw into place in those, you know, some of the remaining holes. Um, that might do a good job of securing a card right inside the inside the system. So yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do here, and um, you know that might help a lot with terms of this system in terms of what it's capable of doing. Um, right now, only having a Pentium Four, um, you know, late late model Prescott that's got hyper threading in it, so it is a single core. Uh, dual threaded. I've only got two gig worth of RAM that the system has that it can use max even at the you know newest firmware revision um, and only having the very very low graphics capability was uh, certainly not helping the system at all in terms of overall performance. Um, so this might this might um, you know I don't want to say save the day but this might might make this system usable enough that it can it can function. So we're going to work on this a little bit and see if I can get Windows to boot properly and 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 work properly on this uh, on this uh, setup, and then if so, we'll try to we'll try to do some jury rigging. All right, so check this out. We managed to switch around a couple things here. So uh, first thing I did, I I switched to this uh, the green version of this one because I needed some. I wanted to use one that was a little bit uh, not as just a tiny bit less wide. So we moved to that one. Um, you can see here still plugged in via this uh, extension and then here's the card we ended up doing with that it's a, a radeon uh hd 3650 um, with 512 megabytes of ram and uh this one actually worked and recognized i tried two other ones and they just they windows was having some trouble seeing them so um what we ended up doing to connect it was i pulled off the little like clip Thing that is installed on here so you don't have to use screws for adding PCI adapters and since we're not going to add any PCI adapters to this system it's got everything it needs already um, other than a graphics card 
Um, the PCI slots themselves didn't have notches to actually screw something in, so I just left them out. And then what we did was in the space that was left, um, I installed the card and I used, again, where these, these um, I can't remember what these are called, but these kind of screws that you can uh, lock the uh, uh, monitor cables in place. I took the slot cover off this slot and then I reattached it once the card was through. So now it's nice and secure inside. And then on the bottom, I just bent down the end of the clip here just to kind of fit underneath the, uh, the system. So now this is secure in place uh, and seems to be working perfectly fine. Windows recognized it okay. Um, and now we can uh, we can take a look and see um, how this one goes. So again, you know, not great performance with only two uh, gig of memory that can be recognized in the system. Um, it does have a Pentium 4 hyper-threaded processor in it, so that's okay. And then now we don't have the cheap uh, eight megabytes worth of onboard video. We actually have uh, half a gig um, of video here installed on this system and it is working perfectly fine. So let's take a look at uh, the old hardware info and uh, other performance settings on the system. Okay, so we're booted up into Windows here and uh, we will load up some stuff on here and it's kind of interesting the way this goes. So in the BIOS, um, there wasn't there wasn't anything in there for me to be able to um, disable the onboard video. You kind of just have the option to say, hey, do onboard video only or, um, you know, what was called auto, so it would use the, the other video card. So let's just switch over here, make sure we're on correct um, a resolution on this for the for the, the monitor I have here, which is 1440 by 900. Um, let's go into device manager and take a look uh, that everything is still recognized correctly. I think it should be. So display adapters, a Radeon 3600 series. Then you've got this other device's video controller that's sitting here. I think that might be the onboard controller. Um, that's just such a piece of garbage that Windows doesn't even know what to do with it. Um, so that's just kind of sitting on its own. Now we will boot into hardware info and take a look at the other piece that's kind of interesting on this one. Again, um, you know, could be just part of the cheapness of this system overall in terms of uh, upgrade options. But it only shows, again, this, the uh, GMA 900 graphics controller here in the system summary, which is kind of strange because you're not, we're not running off of that. We're running off of the, the Radeon card. So that's kind of weird. But when we go down and take a look at the available video adapters, it does show both of them, right? So the Radeon card is showing here um, that it's connected and working and, and has everything running appropriately. Um, it does, I think it see recognizes, it says it's, see it says it's, it's, you know, by a by 16 card, but it is running at by one. Um, but I don't think that that's an issue with this card in terms of like what it's actually capable of is, right, it, we're not talking about a modern video card that needs all of the bandwidth of a, of a Gen 3 PCIe slot. So I think it should be running okay uh, on this system. And, uh, and giving us, you know, the basic balance of performance that we need. Um, we'll open up the Google Chrome here and pop over to YouTube and we'll put the crab rave on and just show the, the performance. So when I initially uh, had tested the system out after getting it up, updated and, and booted and, and installed um, with that eight meg video card, uh, you, I couldn't even run crab rave. I couldn't even run a, a video at 144 P. Like that's how bad the card just not capable of of doing any type of um, any type of graphics other than like basic, basic, basic. So now that we've got, you know, a, a decent low end video card, uh, we can run this at we're running at 360 P now and the quality is quite a bit better, you can see here. I mean, it's gonna be pixelated obviously because we're running um, we're running at 360p. <laughs> but uh, as, far as, as far as the graphics themselves, it doesn't look like it's doing too bad. Um, I know a lot of this is pinning the processor um, in terms of its capability to run, but 
you know, having this, a little bit of that graphics capability is, is obviously something that every system needs to have to be able to not do it entirely um, via the processor. Anyways, so it looks like the system is is okay. Um, I'm actually, um, you know, going through this, you know, in, inspiration to try and get that card installed with the uh, with the PCI slot. Uh, actually, turned out to be a great a great thing. Um, I'm really happy that I that we gave this a shot because otherwise this was going to be a really really um, you know, very basic system with not a lot of functionality because of that video card, um, as well as having that low memory capacity. So I think this is going to turn out very well for somebody. I uh, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, uh, want to stay tuned for for more of these videos. or try to get one of these out every week um, as I get these systems built up and running. Uh, I also hope that you guys are all you know staying safe and staying healthy out there, and we will catch you in the next one.